Alrighty. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. As Brett from Crypto Mastery, and today is August first. Look at that. Got a lot to look at here in the in the markets. Um, definitely want to look at the uh, monthly candle close that we had yesterday at July thirty first because that's significant. And we're going to look at it a little differently than normal. Of course, the heat map here up on the screen. If we hide the uh, let's see, tethers down. Well, it's nominal. Obviously, that's a stable coin. So uh, a little bit of red here. Did Bitcoin down one percent? Ethereum one percent. Not a lot happening in these markets. And so that's to be expected. Uh, you know, August is typically a slow month. And um, see, this thing keeps beeping at me here. So people are trying to join here. Okay, gotcha. So uh, let's dive into the charts a little bit. So here's the heat map, not much to see. Sometimes we have something to watch, sometimes we don't. Let's hop right over into Bitcoin for a minute. And there's that Bart Simpson that we were watching. <clears throat> and um, there was someone else's chart I was checking out there uh, last week. But uh, so we're down a bit on Bitcoin. We've been saying that we come down to 28,000. There's nothing new here. We can look at our indicators in a minute and we will. But we so we have this head and shoulders forming potentially. Uh, it's a it's a sloppy one because it's kind of like a shoulder and a, and a you know a body with two heads because these are the same size. So I uh, have been saying I think that we're in an uptrending channel here. I don't think it's a head and shoulders. We have our double ERI here, and um, a TSI was kind of trying to peak higher, but it's gone red here. And uh, so we want to look at the uh, weekly just get an overall feel of things. But you know the twenty nine thirty thousand. Uh, all the way up to 32,000 is very significant. On the weekly, we have a bearish TSI forming. Now, it's the first day in the week, so that could change. And so uh, I think it's a slow week. We want to keep an eye on things, but kind of topping out here, we had a, a lower high here on the TSI. And I've been, you know, say, it's all in line with what I've been saying. We pull back and then we rally and push hard. So, um, but that's what we're looking at here. Today is Tuesday. So as this TSI confirms, however, it is below the 80 line. And so if prices continue to drift down this week, then very likely, you know, we see a cycle come down, at least in this mid-range area. What we'd really like to see is the TSI come down in the oversold regions, and then we get a nicer bounce. Okay, so I just wouldn't expect any fireworks right away here uh, on the weekly. Let's see, we've kind of gone red. We have gone red on the signal. It's a bit overbought here. You know, the signal line is great when it's coming from these extremes down below and turning green like we saw here. Uh, and um, uh, fully a year ago, exactly, it threw me off there. Monday, August 1st was the last time the signal line really went green from an oversold area. And those are gonna be those best ones. Similarly, the overbody area all the way up here was back in April of 2021. And, um, you know, we saw that, uh, uh, well, April 2021, you know, it um, did go down all the way through here into 2022 when the markets really started to drop. So this was fairly prescient that the markets were gonna head lower even six months ahead of time or more. So that's interesting. That's why I really like the signal line. And of course, when these all align together, the weekly trend indicator is kind of tricky on this. Uh, I like it more for the daily. So let's hop back over to the daily here in a minute. But I did want to look at the uh, monthly here. Uh, let me do this and make a copy of this chart. Uh, and or we'll just go straight to the monthly. Why don't we do that? Because what I wanted to show you here is this uh we're, we're getting a bit overbought on the tsi however if we switch to a three month something we haven't done before and i clean up these indicators a bit let's just jump over to a, a quarterly chart and see if we can get any uh indications here so we had the first bullish eri on a quarterly basis right here the battle is really at thirty thousand. 31, 32,000. but if we look at this right in here this twenty nine thousand is very important because as you can and uh, if I draw this, uh, if I draw this here across right at 29,000, this is that level. Now, all my other indicators are going to pop off or turn back on again. But see, right it through there, move this out of the way for now. Uh, we see that 29,000 level was so important all the way through this zone. So it came up here, resistance, support, support. And, you know, this is the three month, the quarterly chart. So it just cleans it up a bit. And I'm going to bring it. So that 29,000 level, very important. We're holding it as of now, but we need to get above that 31, 32,000 level to rally, as we've been saying. 
And that's that green line here. So once we get about 32K, we're we're in good shape. So, um, you know, we'll first um, kind of actually the first candle hasn't even printed on the, the, the quarterly, obviously. And um, let's kind of go back to the uh, monthly here. And we could look at a two month. I'm just trying to smooth out some of the noise. I was watching a video this morning, uh, which uh, was pulling up a two month chart. It had a, it had a somewhat interesting, I don't know. I, I tend to go with monthly and quarterly, but um, this is uh, was somewhat interesting. Let's take a look at it on a two month chart and uh, we'll just eyeball it, turn off all the indicators here. So, you know, uh, this, this candle here is at a support level and is is a, a doji that would indicate higher prices but i just i don't know i don't see that as, as significant because of this twenty nine thousand level so you know we're all in the same uh kind of area here we want to make sure that uh we push higher from these levels our radar is mixed here so whereas last week it was all green uh you know the let me just fix the radar a little bit because uh, that's important. I like to do it at, uh, let's go a little bit longer term on this. So instead of four hour, we'll go straight into a daily and then a weekly, monthly and quarterly like we were looking at. It's just a little different way to see it because these are based on uh, the uh, programmatic levels. Joe created these on the programmatic levels that a lot of the funds use. And so often when we see the radar go all green, in a time frame sequence, then the programmatic buying or selling comes in. So we're kind of mixed here on Bitcoin. Uh, we, uh, you know, some of these, I think it was Solana was all green though. That was interesting. So let me just jump back up into here and find Solana real quick. Let's see if that's still, so that's kind of flipped over too, which is interesting now that the month is finished, still monthly bullish. All right, let's get, not get ahead of ourselves. Let's take a look at Ethereum real quick, but very similar, a lot of sideways action, low volume, you know, not much to see here. And that's kind of where we are until we get above 31K is interesting. 32K is where we need to hold as I've been saying. So let's set an alert on this. You should have alerts crossing up above 32K. That's where you want to be kind of getting back in these markets here. You know, I would suggest uh, dollar cost averaging is not a bad idea in this range. And, and you know, on the, any pullback again on this weekly chart, uh, let's see what happened here, 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 and yeah, no, nope, not that one. Let me put that one away. So basically, uh, this, um, you know, we're holding the weekly chart. We have the bull market support band. If we push this on, let's see, that's essentially that 21 day EMA. And if I did put the bull market support band, it would be similar to this, but this is what we want to see. We want to see it holding at the 2150 week EMA and be above that. So we are there. Uh, is could it be a topping area and, and could this be the head and shoulders? I mean, this is this is still possible. We have that. Um, actually, I can't get rid of this one. So let's say this is the left shoulder. This is the head. And then we see another shoulder here. But again, I, I think there's enough support behind us that that's not the case. I think we pull back down into the upward trend channel down here about 28K. And worst case scenario, obviously, there's always a worst case scenario. But the second bad scenario where it really isn't bad it's an excellent place to dollar cost average where you might want to have alerts is on this red trend line at twenty five thousand seven hundred. and of course that goes all the way back down here if we zoom out pretty important uh zone so i think you know look the bottom line is quiet august quiet summer and uh we should see some fireworks coming back when the volume comes back in the markets in september because the old saying sell in may and go away on wall street has always been the case and uh, so that's what they do. They basically they they sell their positions in May. They go off to the Hamptons and and sink, sip champagne and margaritas all summer. And then they come back refreshed in September. Wall Street starts buying again. So um, with all of that, let's uh, sort of dive into the indicators a bit. So we are getting oversold on the TSI, uh, sorry, the ERI. So this is what we want to see you guys uh this is the weekly basis if we start seeing a bounce here off this zero line essentially this is the ideal zone for getting a weekly eri it just has to get back above 20 within three time periods and so that's the nuance on reading these and so of course we've built the arrow version that's easier to see and read but if uh <clears throat> just to zoom in on this to show you the vertical lines are the green ERI arrows. These correspond with those. So if you see the oscillator down in this region, down below three or 5%, 
and then we get a sudden push higher above the 20 line, that's when those arrows trigger. So here and here you see a number of these coming in. And of course, we like to confirm that with the uh, TSI or trend strength indicator. OK, so, um, you know, there's different size arrows based on a number of things and less ideal conditions. So I'm looking usually for the bigger area arrow or confluence on a number of these. But so, again, about it, you know, we're waiting because it's weekly uh, TSI is overbought. So this is kind of where I wouldn't be buying here. I'd be waiting. And ideally, we see uh, the weekly TSI and ER I go back in conjunction. OK, signal lines just kind of meandering sideways. Let's go back to a daily chart and just see what we see. So we have a little bit. Again, we have conflicting signals here on the daily chart, though. We've got two ERIs. TSI is red and heading lower as of today. So it can languish down here. I'd love to see it double bottom and test this because we've seen that a lot on stochastics RSIs when they sort of double bottom and push higher. But if we zoom out a bit again on the daily, the um, they tend not to stay down here too long. That's why this is such a great indicator. You know, they'll usually come down and spend a few days and then bounce hard. So, you know, we are just kind of languishing. But if it came down here, double tapped and then pushed above that 20 line. So we can set alerts on these. Remember that. So you can have an alert crossing up on the 20 line <clears throat> on Bitcoin and on the daily. So do we want to know that? Sure. That is our signal to go check the ERI. The ERI is here. It's just, uh, it's been a few days. And again, I think what happens is we see this play out. We come down to tap and touch this uh, lower trend line support, and then we reverse higher. So, you know, there's that scenario one and scenario two would be to come down a little bit lower. Any questions, you guys? That's what I'm expecting. <clears throat> All right. So with that, we can um, look at a few other things. Uh, the trend indicator is red. That just means there is no trend, right? So we can turn that off. You can also set alerts on these. So if you go in here and hit add alert on the trend and see how I have the bell, that'll alert whenever there's a new bell. And you know what you can also do? Instead of just do it only once, set it to once per bar close. So that means it will continue to do these. Now there's an expiration date on here for September 1st. And if you want to change that to uh, open-ended <clears throat> and you want to know whenever there's a bell alert on Bitcoin on the daily, just turn that. All right. So I forgot to renew my account because it's, uh, again, it, it renewed me automatically at the pro version, not the premium. So apologies for that. I'll take care of that this week. Uh, and, um, but again, you can set that to once per bar close. You can change this, uh, the expiration date, maybe push it out a month. Let's see if they'll let us do that instead of nine. And it might not, it's going to maybe limit the features. So, okay. So there's September 1st. I uh, didn't let me change it. Um, no big deal, but you can change that in there. You should be able to though, September 30th and September 30th. There you go. So you can even make that December 30th. Uh, or maybe not. <laughs> so it'll let you go out for a month. So, uh, but you get the idea. So you can get that alert whenever there's a bell on the daily within that time frame. All right. So with that, you guys, uh, let's see what else do you guys want to look at? I mean, I want to continue to give you nuances. If you're here and you're in crypto mastery or in the M3 active trader, you guys know a lot of this. If uh, you're seeing this for the first time on the YouTube channel, uh, please like and subscribe. You can get us every week, get more nuances on these indicators. And also the, uh, where did that thing go? The uh, If you'd like to find out more about this, you can go to cryptomastery.online. And here is this. So I'll go back to this weekly so you guys can see it. Cryptomastery.online. You can find out how to get these indicators to get a month free. These are have been excellent in helping us time these markets. And uh, there's uh, several of these included. And look, even all of these are so good. Even just the average true range had us entering this market back in January, right? So we also had our ERIs and TSI signaling that, but we're still in a bullish upward move. So that's that average true range here. And uh, here's the uh, where you can find out more about these, because what happens is you get access to these seven indicators, the ERI, TSI, the trend indicator, the signal, this dynamic average true range. And there's a couple other ones, including that radar that I showed you, which have helped us nail these markets the last couple of years. So it's $97 a month, or if you pay for six months, you get a month free up front. And this, these are those indicators that you get here. So CryptoMastery.online, you can read all about it. 
All right. Uh, with that, so let's hop back into the charts here. And so what else can we look at? We can, uh, let's take a look at Ethereum and the total market cap. And, uh, you know, so again, Ethereum holding above that 21 and 50 day exponential moving average. Really important that it holds there because once we get down below that on this weekly basis, uh, it, uh, it spells trouble and often multi weeks uh, down below that area in that zone. So, uh, you know, where could we go down to? Some people are saying on Bitcoin, we could go down to 18K. I really don't see that. But on Ethereum, if it were to lose the 21 and 50 day EMAs, the support zone is, depending on how you draw this here, if we want to do the real candle bodies, which is probably the way to do it, uh, we could see Ethereum back at around 1500 and then kind of go higher. The, unfortunately, this uh, market has really lost a lot of the volume and um, not a lot going on. I guess I could try to turn that back on here. And oops. So the, uh, you can see this drop off in uh, volume here, just going down. So this is the summer. This is what we see in the summer kind of doldrums. Any news? We usually did start with news and crypto mastery, so we can pull that up. Why is the crypto market down today? I mean, this is probably a nothing story, but let's see. Um, it's something about misleading news. Okay, so the move downward came a day after the Financial Times reported that the SEC had told Coinbase to delist all cryptocurrencies exchange barring Bitcoin. However, that was uh, an inaccurate report. Certainly, that would explain the drop in crypto. Uh, more FUD out there that uh, is pushing markets lower. And um, the looks like something was omitted in here. The uh, didn't help the crypto markets. Well, look, you know, you, you've heard me say a hundred times, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. So the news is usually a catalyst for where the, the market was going anyway. Been saying it's going to pull back down to that 28K level, that upper trend line for a while now. Uh, we can also look at the DXY. We should uh, pull that up. We usually look at that in more detail on our M3 crypto class tomorrow. But uh, with the uh, DXY pushing up, the Bitcoin and the markets go down. It's inverse relationship, somewhat decoupled lately, but uh, as of now, it's still a good leader to and uh, correlate correlative indicator. It's not necessarily an indicator there, inverse relationship, obviously. All right. So, but here we were talking about this, a decisive close before below the $1 trillion mark. And now they're having at 1.12 trillion. It's usually those round numbers. It's those uh, round numbers that are so important. We'll pull up the uh, chart of the total market cap. And uh, that would obviously be bad. We've been talking about that for some time. So let's kind of see where we're at because that's really going to be important. So coming down to the uh, total market cap here, and we are at 1.13 trillion. Yeah, well, so similarly on this weekly basis, it still has, it's above the 2150 week exponential moving average. This is this line in the sand, and we can also extend this over here right at right at 1.1 trillion. Uh, the, you know, the, the round numbers are usually the important ones. And I have alerts down here. If we, if we do break below $1 trillion, then we have trouble. But because the 21 and 50 day EMAs are right here, this is going to also spell trouble if we start to drift down below this 1.1 trillion. Okay, so we have to keep that in mind. And unfortunately, starting to see, you guys have seen me draw these on the rounded bottoms, see a bit of a rounded top here. I'll get rid of this old squiggly line, which actually played out almost uh, almost exactly. But uh, it's, that's where we are. We need to keep an eye on things and, um, you know, have this, this, the line in the sand here is, you know, I'd say certainly 1 trillion, but and if we get down into the 990 million, I have an alert here saying, hey, it's time to sell and get out of these markets. Because if we lose those levels, uh, the lower levels down in here are uh, quite a bit lower. I have it on another chart here, but uh, the liquidity pockets on this, if we were to lose those levels, I mean, you know, certainly down in this range, 600 to 800 billion dollars in the total market cap, even down. I mean, I don't think we'd get all the way down in here really don't see that happening. We need to see higher lows and then those lows holding here in this region. So, you know, that's where I would see expect to see accumulation if we come back down again. It's too hard to say. Uh, let's see. Uh, Private J says, uh, yeah, our good friend Max Wright is previously featured ThorChain. Well, Rune, um, yeah, we, Rune, sorry, Rune, which is ThorChain, was our pick back in December of 2021. 
that was my pick. Uh, and Mike put it in the newsletter, went up 160% and then the whole market crashed. It is a good project. Uh, happy to take a look at that. Uh, you know, these these good projects that survived and continue to develop through the bear market are going to run again in the next bull market here. So Rune would be another good one to uh, keep an eye on. So uh, let's see, what else uh, do we want to look at in here? That covers the uh, DXY. Might want to look at some news in here as well, but uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at Rune and just see what it's uh, showing us. I will use Binance, even though a lot of us can't use Binance anymore in the U.S., but uh, they do have a long history. So, I mean, look, on Arun, it, uh, it is a good project. Is this where you want to buy it? I mean, look, it's uh, the chart does not look good. I would be looking for a double bottom right down in this range down here around 0.785. We have, uh, all right, so we have our ERI. That's probably why you mentioned that. So we have an ERI. It's just a little arrow, though. And we have a TSI trying to go green. You want to have an alert on that. It looks like I already do for when it breaks above 20. So let's uh, also take a look at, let's see, I'll put on our dynamic average true range. I would be watching the ATR on this really to see when it turns green again. But here's the thing. With all of these aside, sometimes good old-fashioned TA is the most important. And again, that 21 and 50-day EMA, so important that it gets back above those. So I think a solid place to pick up some rune though is the back here, like 80 cents, right here, 80 cents. If you can get some of rune at 80 cents, this would be a good place to catch that for some dollar cost averaging. And, you know, we zoom out, when it out, zoom out. Let's just see where else this thing could go. But great, a lot of liquidity back in that range. I think that would be an excellent place, this whole little range in here, because we've seen that. But ideally, see it bottom, see the ERI and TSI go green. Ideally, a signal also go green. But the thing to keep in mind with these is always look at what's the percentage they will go back or could go back to at old highs. So this is an 18x to get up to even more, to get up to old highs around 21. This is a 25x, you guys, in the next bull run. And even if it only gets to its old highs, would you want to ride it that long? You should always hold a moon bag. But even in this range here, it looks would be you know certainly a likely pullback area. And if you get up to that region, right around this $5.50, that's the uh, 587%. Uh, so that would be a, a 5X. And uh, looking at that, so, you know, almost a 6X. So that looks interesting. Nice. Thanks for putting it on our radar again. And uh, let's see, anything else you guys want to look at? But, um, you know, you've got the radar. I'd watch that daily, weekly bullish, but the longer term time frame, the monthly and the quarterly bearish. So I do think it comes, probably comes back down in this range and then goes higher. So, with that, uh, why don't we hop in and uh, check some news here? I got a phone call coming in. Sorry, you guys usually block that. And uh, anything else that you guys want to look at before we dive into the news? <clears throat> Phantom coin, sure. See, I, like, Alex says CHZ. Let's do that first. And we'll just go down here. It's on Bitfinex. It's on Gemini. So let's see. We'll do Gemini. Uh, let's do so CHZ here. You know, um. Well, let's do our basic TA. A lot, lot of overhead resistance here. Probably a similar scenario. Comes back and double bottoms down in here. I wouldn't be buying it in this area necessarily, but what does our ERI TSI show? It has a bearish on the ERI. And if we pull up our TSI, also looking red, would not be buying here. And uh, again, that 21 and 50 day EMA rolling over and nearly all red on the radar, you guys. Remember your radar, especially if it's all red, don't want to be buying anything. All red is sell, and uh, we know on these uh, ERI TSI's confirmation, this is going to come back down again. You know, you want to wait for the bullish signals, green ERI, green TSI, and that's how you're going to do the best with these indicators, and they're so powerful, as we know, especially when they start to align. Uh, we have kind of a green on the signal, but you can you also want to look at the slope. It's rolling over, not a very uh, strong signal bounce. The best ones on the signal line are where they get down, extended below the, the midline, and then curve back up higher on those. Do you want to look for this area? If I could shade it in, I would. Let me see if I can just take this pen. You see this little shaded area in here? That's a great signal where it's overbought and then it turns up. This is your ideal buy point using the signal. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, but not in the sideways where it's sort of topping out. And, uh, you know, you can even draw like a trend line here saying, kind of showing this zone here is not, not a good, uh, not a good spot to be buying anything like CHC. All right. So uh, Phantom Coin, of course, let's take a look at this. 
and probably has us in the list here go over to our crypto mastery list and um phantom coin not quite in there yet i mean we this changes weekly phantom coin has been one of our moonstream picks for over two years now and one of our high flyers this is definitely one you want to keep an eye on you guys so i'll just use phantom on binance uh you can still get phantom coin at various places so i believe gemini and um and uh uh, certainly others this signal line is looking grid so look at this all red on the radar don't, don't touch this right now phantom coin great project here's the thing though a little bit confusing you're tempted to buy it why because it's at this support line and you know it's it's rallied hard off of this i mean this okay here's the caveat uh do not go all in on anything this is not financial advice but this is that exact this ideal kind of double bounce territory but it doesn't mean it's going to bounce hard off of there. This is a judgment call. I would prefer to wait for the ERI at least and for the radar to go red. Will it hold this 24 cent level? Don't know. You know, my preference would be set an alert right here at 26, just saying, hey, there's a bounce happening here and maybe a possible buy. So you want to put that in your notes. So buy uh, here, question mark, question mark. So you go in and change or check your other indicators, right? So but we don't have any of the indicators we want to see. We want to see the ERI. We don't have that. We have the uh, ATR is still in the exit mode. You want to see it in entry mode. And uh, all red on the radar, there's nothing bullish about this from our indicators. Even the, the signal line just has a green dot. That's not enough. Again, we want to see this oversold and bounce. So, you know, um, that's what we want to watch for. However, however, you do want to watch it. I do like this. Double bottoming pattern here. These are excellent to jump back above, above. So if you were to pick up some phantom coin long run in the long term, you know, I think this is a great spot to own it. Okay. So, but since we have these indicators, I'd say, you know what? Why not wait for the ERI and TSI to start to line up? And that's a perfect segue to go into your traders checklist. If you guys aren't using this, make sure you're using your trader success worksheet. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you'd like a copy of our trader success checklist using our indicators, you know, just go to, I think it's moonstream.io slash CM checklist, or you can just do it this way, mastery.cryptobrigade.com slash CM checklist. So I believe we just, the, the faster version of this is moonstream.io cm dash checklist actually that wasn't it i'll have to find it for you but uh you can find it right here uh and um yeah so mastery.cryptobrigade.com slash cm checklist and get your a copy of this just put your name and email inf information there but what this allows you to do is to have high success and high confidence in your trades if you see things like this eri going higher trend strength indicator going higher, signal line going from red to green. Usually these three are enough. Sometimes I'll just do it with two, but the more of these you have checked and a higher trader success score, you want to be using this. If you get into the four range, four, five, six, seven, much higher likelihood of success on those trades. So I definitely want to be using that. All right. So I don't see any other questions here. Why don't we jump around a bit, see what else we can find and from the high flyers here well let's look at some news and just see what's going on if we can find anything uh, bitcoin news we can also have a look at uh other new sources like the uh, markets pro at coin telegraph is one of those we like oops i buggered that and we were going to be telling you guys about this this week but we're going to push this off a little bit uh let's see okay i have an account here Sorry, guys, I thought that was already pulled up. And uh, all right, I just have to redo this. I cleared my cookies recently. That's what happens. So don't look at that. And all right, I'm, I'm not going to pull this up right now. I'll do it off screen because it's pulling up my password manager. Let's just dive into the Bitcoin news. Uh, yeah, the so there's another curve exploit that was yesterday. And so... You know, um, this stuff, this DeFi is still a little bit temperamental, right? And, uh, you know, that's the kind of the scary part. They will get it figured out, but uh, there are still exploits and things happening. And we want to be mindful of that possibility. But uh, this has uh, probably been absorbed already by now. And so I'm not going to dive into it too much. 
some news here, Bitcoin accumulation season. Some people are saying, we already know this. Heading into the halving next year, people are, you know, a lot of people are starting to accumulate Bitcoin. The highest number of wallets, non-zero balance wallets is right now. And that usually precedes the moves to the upside along with the other things like the uh, going to the halving. So this is what I was going to share with you. Uh, this is uh, something that we have access to. Biggest price movers. We can also use the trading view scanner. But uh, this is another cool one that Cointelegraph has. It has something called a Vortex score. We're going to be uh, featuring this here in the coming weeks, just not right now. In the news here, no trending news. See, that's how slow it is, you guys. What about latest news? We have uh, Crypto Trader weighs in on possible Bitcoin extinction scenarios. Uh, I don't I don't know. I think it's always worth knowing what's possible, but I don't see that as a likely scenario. See, Bitcoin won't back the, uh, the U.S. dollar. So I did see Vivek Ramaswamy speak. He was uh, he's a presidential candidate. He was at the Bitcoin 2023 conference. Pretty interesting guy. Smart guy. Um, let's see. Yeah, here spooked by the curve liquidation threat. DeFi protocol shore up defenses. You know, all of these breakages are good. You know, some companies even hire ethical hackers. Recently, somebody was paid millions of dollars to hack into a, a system and they were successful, but by doing so, exposed the weakness in the software. Uh, Irish rules, rules, tax warrants, see crypto's regulatory winter, bipartisan spring. Let's see. Uh, we have a 92, all right, this is interesting, $92 million in derivatives uh, liquidations. That was half an hour ago. Let's take a look at that. And um, let's see, we've kind of already covered these. So, all right, let's take a look at that. Bitcoin pledge below this. This is on Bitcoin.com. $92 million in derivatives liquidations. So that is uh, today. So it won't show up on the, the Bybit uh, liquidations just yet. But because of that drop, actually, was it yesterday? Because we saw a nice little drop. Well, it was last night, so technically today. All right, so we'll show we'll see that show up under the. You can just liquidity uh, liquidation levels here, <clears throat> and um, there's a number of these. But uh, liquidation heat map uh, that's on high block. There's also one on Bybit here. We'll go to the block and check that out and see if it... Usually this is a day later, but let's see. Uh, Bitcoin liquidations. Yeah, so I liquidated a whole bunch of longs here. So that was... That's actually real time. That's today. So that's good. I'm going to bookmark that because uh, always good to see these things in real time, not have a delay. And uh, maybe we'll put that... Maybe we'll put that into our members area with this iframe. That would be cool. Uh, let's see. Bitcoin, Bitcoin total liquidations here. So this was long and four hour erect 20 million we're looking for the bigger number 24 erect that's 105 million so it's continuing to go higher mostly on the long side because of course we are down and this this is an interesting heat map i haven't seen this before of uh the how much of the uh liquidations there are so that's pretty cool all right we'll make sure and uh we'll, we'll keep these we'll save these so um interesting and then crv of course and Bitcoin, Ethereum, we're always going to be the number one leader on that. So uh, this is pushed higher. 92 million is now 105, primarily long positions. So we can see that here on this 85 million. Well, let's see. This this may be 24 erect, longs 87 million, right? So this is saying mostly, so 92 million liquidations, mostly on the longs position. So that matches up. And um, so anyway, um, that's uh, that's because people were buying buying Bitcoin, thinking it was going to go higher. And of course, it's peeled over a bit and they're saying they're blaming it on the curve announcement. But uh, at any rate, uh, John, let's see. Question John asks, is that checklist in your crypto mastery dashboard? I'm new to the team and just the last day had reviewed all the videos and didn't see the checklist. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, we uh, we I don't think we have it in the members area just yet although we let me find out myrene is offline here but uh, I'll, let me log in for you and find out if not uh, i will drop it in the chat so you guys have that link for getting a hold of that here today and uh it's if you're watching the youtube replay we'll have that linked as well so that's on us and uh, you guys can utilize this highly recommend it you do that we're continuing to evolve that uh that's in the chat room 
Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, and again, as, as you get more of those, welcome welcome to Crypto Mastery, by the way. And uh, this has really been our secret weapon. It's the basis of what we run, my uh, higher level group, Moonstream Crypto. So if you guys are interested in a higher level training where we do it, more in-depth training in videos like this every Wednesday, so tomorrow at noon, and uh, you can upgrade to the Crypto Mastery group, includes indicators and a whole bunch of other things. That's just at moonstream.io slash m3 so you can learn more about all of that and read user feedback on this page so a uh, great group uh, we meet every week and i do daily access and daily updates in the signal group so and there's quite a bit here so at any rate um but yes i highly recommend you utilize that and uh, we'll make sure that that checklist is in the members area i'm almost positive that it is so if you'll bear with me here, I'll just pull that up and double check. And any questions on the checklist at all, because uh, that is, uh, you know, continue to evolve that. There's advanced scenarios in here as well. So, you know, is it above the 21 and 50 day EMAs? Is it at support trend line? Uh, we're going to pull up the vol index here, which is one of our other indicators that we love, especially on the four hour time frame. But uh, also the rocket scenario, if you're not familiar yet with the rocket, you guys know it's my favorite pattern that, uh, well, can't say that I invented it. I'm the only person that I've ever heard who's called it this, but essentially a rocket is this candle here where it's a green body candle sitting on the launch pad. So either a 21 day, a 50 day EMA, a trend line support, that's the launch pad, the wick down below, and then this is the rocket fuel in the candle. The light that fuse that candle or the rocket shoots up into the sky until it runs out of fuel uh, this is uh trumps all of our in other indicators i i love this uh rocket on the launch pad and so that's a big one uh, and you can look back now that you see you've seen it you can't unsee it uh, especially when these line with some of these other indicators the advanced setups are there are multiple eris there's descriptions in there so you guys can learn more about that in the uh right inside of the checklist so let me see here for some reason i don't have that uh bookmarked appropriately for the crypto mastery um, members area so i'll have to uh, find that for you guys and uh, go ahead and log in so we'll do that let me keep going and um where else were we with this uh we'll see if i have any other questions i got two monitors three monitors here so if you see me looking around guys that's what i'm looking at and um but yeah <clears throat> there's a lot in here on the uh, news side was there anything else that we wanted to look at? Uh, I think we've covered it. Let's see, I was in that other screen. And so, hang on a second. Bitcoin plunge, that's where we were. So let's see. And um, <clears throat> yeah, if you guys are, any of you are coders, there's a 31,000 bug bounty for anybody that can discover bugs in this software. I think you're going to see more and more of these companies doing that. I own a software company and we've hired ethical hackers. We've given bounties on finding bugs. Good way to find those problem areas before anybody else does and runs off with money. All right. So anything else? Uh, let's just do this. We can also run over to Crypto Panic. Another good one for news aggregators. All right. What happened there? It didn't load. All right. Uh, crypto. I misspelled it. There you go. How about that? The error was between my ears. Usually happens that way. Uh, crypto. All right. I have misspelled it again. Let me let me slow down a little bit, you guys. Panic. There you go. So let's see. We can. I don't expect to see a lot here. Uh, the crypto trader weighs on the possible Bitcoin extinction scenario. We talked about that, or I pulled it up in one of these other charts. Similar news here. Let's, uh, I'll go ahead and open this up. And Arthur Hayes says some news, AI DAOs to become invincible. Arthur's always got good insights. Let's pull up what he has to say. I don't know if he's gonna name anything particular, but uh, yeah, let's come back to that. Oh, so crypto trader weighs in impossible. I think that's the same article. Yeah. All right. So we got that from two different sources. So let's see. Um, you know, I don't want to go down a conspiracy theory uh, trail here. Uh, crypto trader, never heard of them. You know, a lot of these articles are 
kind of sponsored or and um, I won't put it down. Quinn Telegraph has pretty good editorials. I've been asked to write one. I haven't gotten around to it yet. But um, technology serves prevalence of artificial intelligence, chatbot, uh, chat GPT, of course. Uh, if or people figured out a way to attack the chain and gain control of the hash power, he added, continuing his initial point in supercomputers. That's also a big worry. Uh, none of these things are, I think, are going to happen. But yeah, those are quite pivotal. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of speculation, and uh, I saw something recently. I can't verify it. I tried it on ChatGPT, but ChatGPT, their library is only through September 2021. There's something going viral where a guy asked Alexa when World War III would start. I think that was doctored. Uh, Alexa is not ChatGPT, um, but you, you know these are sort of speculations that AI will cause you know, the next big uh, extinction event with AI. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm not going to get into it. What are we going to do? Uh, it's uh, hopefully not. <laughs> That's all we can do is hopefully not. We can hope that it does not happen that way. Uh, this article's not a lot going on here. This was um, just somebody trying to get some street cred and they didn't do a very good job. Um, oh yeah, and FTX, by the way, uh, I saw this this morning trying to restructure. And the other thing is Sam is being... Uh, I won't say accused. The rumors are Sam is behind a a meme coin rug pull for fifty million, or he's a developer on that. I guess uh, he's trying to fund his legal bills, um, certainly. But I hope they don't let FTX come back. It's just you know, what does that say about us if we allow that to come back in after after what they? Uh, if anyone deserves to implode, uh, and I'm sorry if any of you had money on FTX, but FTX doesn't deserve a second chance. Uh, I'm my opinion. They were so careless with with money and all, everything they did. Crypto billionaire Arthur Hayes' vision: AI DAOs to become invisible. Uh, DAOs, of course, decentralized autonomic organizations. And and some people, I did a post on this last year: how DAOs are the new LLC, and uh, and ultimately in the future, you know, it's a little harder to run a decentralized company, but um, DAOs are certainly interesting. And drive, they may drive DeFi supremacy over TradeFi. Uh, DeFi, decentralized finance, Uniswap, things like that, you, you know, places where you can stake and make money, where TradeFi is more of the exchanges and, you know, Binance's and uh, other places uh, that you can exchange trading uh, currencies, et cetera. So BitMEX co-founder are of and former CEO Arthur Hayes, he's not without his own scandal. And, um, you know, I'll just touch on that. He was originally accused of having BitMEX within its profit strategy to liquidate its own traders. I think that's become a easy pickings and is unofficially the business model of several of these offshore ones. And um, I won't name names, but be careful with these offshore leverage trading firms, especially if they're offering money for signing up and funding an account. That to me is a huge red flag that they're, they're, their AIs are targeting you guys. And, and by, make no mistake about it, uh, these big exchanges are employing, as well as institutions, employing the most advanced trading AIs out there. And I've seen it. I've not, not the actual AI, but I found news where companies that sell to institutional trading and exchanges and they claim to offer superior returns. That means they are making money somewhere. Uh, somewhere trading is a zero sum game, so superior returns for the exchanges and institutions means more losses for retail, which is you and I. So that's why I think day trading crypto is a very dangerous game, and uh, it's a loser's game, except for the very, very uh, experienced and uh, well capitalized. So be careful. Uh, so he's talking about self-sovereign AI DAOs, right? So let me just, uh, he's very bullish on DAOs. Latest blog, uh, blog, he envisions a world where AI-powered entities operate independently. That's a little scary. And uh, scaling their operations by raising capital and acquiring computational resources. You know, what do they need humans for? Uh, and so, well, maybe uh, let's we'll just let the AI version of us go make money all day and we just all hang out at the beach. Yeah, imagine what could go wrong. While disrupting traditional finance and building trust through transparency on the blockchain, 
a bunch of word salad there on the blah, blah, blah. Poet AI, I've heard something interesting things about it. Um, and leverages revenue to improve writing skills, operating. All right, so we're going down a rabbit hole on AI. Mm, okay. Just checking questions from you guys. Consensus on AI remains a challenge. AI DAOs. Uh, I don't want to get too far in this. You know, we are looking for things that might move the market. So um, let's see. This is recent six days ago. DeFi, ZK Sync losses 3.4 million, uh, million on blockchain exploit. Sure hope we can figure this out because, uh, you know, not really good for these for the overall market with more of these uh, DeFi hacks and people losing money. All right. Uh, we covered that. Covered that. Uh, anything else? Now, here's this uh, one here, altcoin. Is Curve Finance about to um yeah the bald token that's what sam was allegedly uh was behind uh okay this i hadn't heard richard hart being sued by the sec i uh, presidential candidate I, this guy is if he's running for president that's uh that's, anyway i guess anyone's allowed but um i don't know i'd rather see brock pierce but he's also not without uh previous um scandalous activity <laughs> so uh you know we'll see what happens here rfk thought might be a good choice but i've been having chats with uh, one of our members here and uh you know who you are and so um yeah i can't, can't really fully back that guy so not all of his, not all of his ideas are uh, legit on the level so we have to see hopefully we do get a solid pro bitcoin presidential candidate uh, so well, here's one. So Vivek Ramaswamy, I just don't, I don't think he has the charisma. He's a smart guy. I, I don't see him necessarily a, you know, becoming the nominee. You're not going to get into politics, but um, you know, but here's the thing. More, more people are lining up because more of us are saying we want a pro Bitcoin president. So if it doesn't happen this term, it'll happen. I would say in the next term and you know, lots of big forces against all of this, of course, you know, the big banking industry doesn't want that. Uh, I'm sure Jamie Dimon and his firm, they don't want to give up the reins to the, the rails of the financial industry. They're going to try and control it as best they can. <clears throat> all right. So let's just jump back to the charts here and see what else we can see. We're about 10 minutes from the end of the class. Uh, we could have looked at Solana. We could look at micro caps like, like Polygon Matic. Matic not looking great here. Our indicators show... It's oversold. I mean, if we can start to get an ERI here and a TSI going bullish, then that would be a good sign. But uh, we don't see that. Excuse me, cleared my throat. All right. So, uh, you know what? Polygon not looking good. XRP, everything's down with the overall markets. We have stellar lumens higher. But red on the ERI and TSI, I would say this heads down. We can look at it on a weekly basis. Also overbought on the weekly basis. Uh, at this point, why don't we do this? We'll go over to the uh, scanner, the crypto pairs screener, and see if we can find anything moving. Uh, first thing we want to do here is to change some of our filters. And on the exchanges, uh, we don't want to use all of them. Let's see. You could change it to any CEX. But uh, what I like to do here is change it here. So let's just do Binance US. Plus, let's not use that because it's just hard for people But in the US. But I will do Coinbase and Gemini. That'll be most of them. You guys can choose, choose your own exchanges. <clears throat> Pardon me. And um, so that'll eliminate a lot of the noise. And some of the uh, changes above, below symbol type there are a number of ways to do this this is kind of the let's do this so i don't want to see all of this volume is kind of important i don't need to see the low and here's here's that number so percent change i'll keep change i don't need exchange the high the low i'll turn a lot of this off and then we want to have technical rating is what we want to see so that's that strong buy and you can sort by what's a strong buy, what isn't. All right. And uh, <clears throat> strong sell is often a good place to look for possibly bottoming coins. So LPT we looked at last year. I'll go from there to a daily. 
So the question is, when are these ready to, to bottom out? You don't want to try to catch a falling knife, but sometimes you can catch a good bottoming point. And uh, so let's, uh, nothing looking really good that I'm familiar with. Of course, Lear, sorry, Near, uh, Near Protocols is a solid project. I would watch this. It's a strong sell here, and I would agree with that. It's going to hit resistance on its 21 and 50 day moving average. We have a bearish ERI on there. Uh, Radar is mostly red, but mostly this worries me because it's below the uh, 21 and 50. That's just a great litmus test of where you don't want to be. You want to be above the 21 and 50 day moving average. And I, you know, ideally the 21 breaking the 50 because price action got up above the 50, but it failed as we saw. We kind of have a bullish TSI on this daily, but it's not quite strong enough. I would, but here's how you can do this. When would it be bouncing or showing signs of strength? I'm going to put an alert here at getting back above $1.50 because that would tell me that it's showing strength. So buy question mark. So when that alert goes off, somehow I took a screenshot and uh, then I want to know about it. And then I'll layer in our other indicators. So let me go uh, change this. Uh, we'll, so we'll keep near on the radar as a possible bounce candidate. And uh, from the technical rating, we'll resort this to strong buy. So what's moving in these markets here? Well, this is interesting. You know, the we've got bearish signals, but it's a bullish engulfing candle. And overbought a bit on, but yeah, it's not enough on the checklist. It's not going to check enough of the boxes, right? So we can come in here and on the checklist and say, well, we don't have any of our indicators showing. We have an overbought TSI. The signal is green, so I'll take that back. And the trend indicator is up. All right, well, let's not jump to conclusions then. So we, we have no on the ERI. We have no on the TSI. I mean, it is green and above the 20 line. But, um, you know, uh, it's, it's in overbought territory and this is red. So if the ERI is red, we don't we're not going to count it. It's pretty much a disqualifier uh, for me, you know, and so, but the bullish engulfing candle, that's nice. The trend indicator, it, it had a bell. It's kind of running its course. It's into the sell signal. So just opening this up, uh, this is the first sell signal here on the trend indicator. Take some profits on these because that's been an excellent candidate to, to get out, take some profits. So right back here in the last cycle on the trend, we got in a key and a bell, it, it, do, it dipped, it had that pr take profit signal, and then it sort of dropped and dumped over. Similarly, uh, the bag of money. So the first take profits is the dollar sign. The bag of money is a secondary one. So going back into May on this GUSD, Gemini US dollar here, you know, this thing, now this should be a stable coin. I'm, uh, no, no, this is different. GUSD gold. What's the name on this thing? Uh, Gemini dollar, Singapore dollar. Uh, I see. So that's kind of like a, huh, interesting. It's kind of like a Forex pair, almost a pair of surrogate. At any rate, we're just looking at the charts here, not the actual coin. The key in the bell, we had its first take profit here, and then the second take profit right up here, and then waited for the next key in the bell. But uh, these take profit symbols are ones you want to pay attention to. All right. So anyway, that's G, uh, G U S D S G D. Uh, these are ones I'm not familiar with, so I'm not really going to. But here's a nice looking chart. Okay. Here's a good example above the 21 and 50 day EMA. And but what else do we have? We've got we don't have other other signals, you know, already confirming. The problem with a strong buy is it's already moving. Let's see if we can find one in the just the buy zone that might be just starting out. Here we have Maker. Uh, yeah, here's a good here's a good chart, you guys. So we have a nice uptrending trend channel for one. We have uh, we have a MKR Maker bouncing off. Well, look at this. Here's a great signal. Here we had the ERI right there. Let me make this bigger so you can see this. We had the ERI right there, and then we had the TSI turn green. It was already above the 20 line. Really, we would have much rather gotten in down here. Look at this signal. So the ERI and then the TSI went green and then the signal and bell. So here's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. This this is why the indicators are so good right there. So, uh, you know, you certainly can get in later, but we'd like to see these things bounce off. So ERI, TSI breaking 20 right here. So those of you who are new or watching on the YouTube channel, this is what we look for there. Signal. 
ERI, TSI signal and bell signal went green there. And of course we had the bell, the key and the bell ideal setup. And look what's happened since. From that signal and getting into these down in these levels, got back above the 50 day EMA. So you would have checked that on the check boxes. And now we're, what are we up? We're up hundred percent on this since then. And with con confirming re-entries along the way. So what I get in here, I mean, it looks like it's, it's on a long-term uptrend and I wouldn't say no, I'd rather buy it down around the EMAs. It's a bit expensive at the $1,100, obviously, but we're looking for chart patterns. And of course our ATR went by right in this entry zone right there. Um, we did talk, we do want to talk about the vol index really quickly. So uh, back to a four hour chart of Bitcoin. So the vol index is peaking up here. It's most effective when it's coming out of this red zone and above this black line. And so we're starting to see that in a four hour, uh, but TSI is still red. It's not quite there yet. So I would uh, sit on the sidelines for this. Uh, and uh, if we wanted to look at shorter time frames, we could, but we're kind of on a roll. We have this one hour time frame though. We have a bullish ERI and the TSI is green. We have a signal line going green. So the one hour looking somewhat more interesting, but the problem is it's going to hit resistance right in here, this 29,000 level. So, you know, a lot of times I'm looking for entry qualifications and then looking to disqualify it. And if you can't disqualify it, maybe that's where you enter, but often there's conflicting information. When in doubt, stay out. Uh, but so we do see MKR is uh, some nice movements. Let's see, ANT, I'm not familiar with, but also another nice looking chart here in an uptrend, but we don't have our ERI or TSI. Uh, let's see, well, we do have a recent bell. Let's just see what's going on there. We have a key and a bell. If you guys are looking for an opportunity, ANT, USD, getting a key and a bell. Uh, we are, it's trending higher. So as an example, I'm not familiar with the project. But uh, it's overbought on the TSI or the ERI rather. A bit concerning uh, that it's a bit overbought, but a pullback to the 21 day EMA would be excellent here. And our other indicators are looking pretty good. So let's take a look at ANT crypto. What does they do? And okay, IMX, sure, we'll look at that. Aragon price, not familiar with this. Uh, Ant, interesting title name uh aragon tim draper buys two and a half percent of aragon tokens becomes governance whale well there you go that's driving it show me the chart i'll tell you the news obviously it's something going on there uh all right but let's see what else can we find about aragon let's see does central securities treasury i'm not sure what that means virtual world powered by ethereum let's take a look at uh Coin market cap get a little better description here where let's see i want to do the charts not the market so i want the overall what is it they do that's what i'm looking for here build flexible secure tools that enable anyone to launch and manage DAOs. okay that's interesting so so they're selling picks and shovels for business owners that want to create their own DAO. it sounds like aragon recently deployed the new modular aragon osx protocol no code no code software is the new trend uh, Aragon app on Ethereum and Polygon, driven by the mission to empower everyone experiment with governance at the speed of software. Hyperstructural for governance and governed by Aragon network. So worth looking into. I, Tim Draper's on board. That tells me a lot. Uh, been around for five years. It's up 1,500%. Question is, how do they make money? Uh, well, we'll dig into it a little bit, you know, that's, um, not right now, but, um, that's one to keep on, keep on your radar. I'll give it a, give it a color here and, uh, on flag symbols and system, I'll put it as a, um, I don't know, blue. I like blue is for ones I like to watch. Let's take a look at Pax, uh, Paxos. Certainly, um, yeah, Paxos is a real company too. And they have a bullish ERI. So this this may, wait a minute, is this a stable coin? It's right at a dollar. It's a stable coin. Um, Paxos Standard, I wasn't familiar with that. Um, you know, not nothing to see here. Ignore. Uh, ARPA, oh, IMX. Sorry, guys, let's get that on the radar here. So IMX, Tether, we'll just use uh, Binance because it's got a long history. And let's put the uh, scanner away. We're green on the average true range 
We have a bullish ERI on the daily. We will check the weekly as that as well. It's just perking up above the 21 and 50 day moving averages. So I like that. And as far as our advanced setups, we have a higher ERI. Uh, it's maybe getting a little bit overbought here, but everything is looking good as far as the the other indicators. So ERI, TSI, Signal, and Bell. But this, this TSI is concerning. It's flatlining at 100. These do oscillate. I would uh, much rather grab it off a bottom zone coming up on a fresh ERI. However, these can ride the TSI on the overbought situation for a while. It's just this level seems to be a resistance level that's holding fairly strongly. And we wanted to see, I, you know, I'd, I'd set an alert here uh, to come back and revisit it at right above that level. So I put it as a possible buy with question marks. That just means go check your indicators. But uh, let's take a look at the weekly. So here's a nuance, you guys, and, and some of many of you know this. The weekly is going to give the longer term trend on this. So the ERI was back in here. The trend strength indicator shows there's more upside for this. The 50-day moving average is right up in here. So I would say the upside is limited. You know, what are we doing here? We're in a process of putting in lower highs. So it's just kind of back to that narrative. The summertime is going to be, you know, slow and easy. And um, I think September, we, we start to see these breakouts maybe a little bit sooner. But um you know, I'd be I'd be a little cautious here with IMX. I mean, long term, great project. Let's see what the uh, ATR shows us again. Again, it's in the entry zone. I don't know. I, I here's the thing. It's it's it is a nice looking wedge pattern forming, uh, but I I think probably it goes sideways for another week or two, and then we see that breakout. So uh, we'll come back to that. We can put it on our watch list here. So crypto mastery. There we go. It's on the watch list and immutable X. Of course, you know, gaming companies uh, should do well. All right. Anything else we want to look at? We're right up at the hour, you guys. That's all we have time for. And so I think we covered everything we wanted to. Again, if you are watching this on YouTube, be sure and like, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to use these indicators to catch huge market moves like these that we found, 300%, 657%. Here's ThorChain here. I just Glad I could show you this. You guys are talking about that. This was our pick in December of 2021. We bought in here uh, at Ford. It was actually earlier in the year. Actually, this is the wrong chart. I want to be uh, full of integrity here. We recommended ThorChain December of 2021. But I think we also had recommended it earlier. And um, it had gone up higher. We can check the prices here. But at any rate, these are based on our indicators. And that radar was developed. I'll just touch on ThorChain for a minute. Because the radar was developed because we had that, this great oops, recommendation. It went up 159%. Sorry, I can't spell here today. And then the markets tanked. And people were saying, well, you recommended Rune that went down. I lost money. So we, we went back to our the drawing board and we said, we need, Joe, we said, we need an indicator that tells the overall market direction. So let me turn off this uh, ERI so it's not as messy here. Uh, bear with me. I turned off the radar instead. Okay, here. So basically, I turn off the ATR. Uh, back in the uh, end of, yeah, so right in here, you guys. So we right in this October, November. It was it, this was where we recommended rune right in here and it went up and then the whole markets rolled over right so it was something in this range we we had recommended it down below it right down in here and it went up 100 it's 1.159 percent and then the whole markets rolled over so what this radar is designed for is if this thing goes all red take out get your profits out maybe i'm mistaken but I could have sworn it was December 2021, unless unless this was the push up here. Uh, I'd have to double check. But uh, let's just take a look at this again. So we would have had the double bottom ERI right in here, the trend strength indicator right in there. I mean, Rune was a textbook example of when these indicators all align. So we're looking right in this range right here. I'll go back. I'll zoom out a bit. It actually went up 365%. And then right in here, the radar would have been going all red on multiple time frames. And again in here. So, you know, that's what's given us this last bit of the puzzle. 
And we are just waiting for the radars to go all green for early entry to get back into these projects. And then we'll be watching for all red radars. Do we get back up in this range and reject? But that's the last piece of the puzzle. Where we are right now, by the way, though, is we have a green ERI recently the TSI needs to get above 20 we need to see the signal line come up I think this is this is not a very strong bounce so again Rune's not an ideal candidate at this point in time so let's hop back out on this and just uh but again if you want to have access to these you know these indicators that did catch the Bitcoin bottom went up 525 percent rather and another 124 percent these red arrows indicating when we could have avoided 50 percent drops that's on the, the daily basis and the weekly basis. So at any rate, uh, that's what we have for you here. And if you'd like more information, that's at cryptomastery.online. And thank you, Leslie. Uh, hopeful thoughts, prayers for the weather to calm down on behalf of Myrene, the Philippines community, a Philippine community. They've been hammered by two typhoons in a row. So uh, there's massive flooding. Myrene sent me a picture going to the store to get supplies and driving through a foot of water. Uh, it's uh, but it's it's uh, my rainy season over there, and uh, they must like it, or they would they would leave. Um, not always that easy, but um, at any rate, if you'd like to join us for tomorrow's class in Moonstream M3 Crypto, where we do a deeper dive into the markets and look at the DXY and uh, overall markets, uh, monthly, weekly charts, and dive a little deeper into our watch list, you can join us there at moonstream.io/m3. And if any of you would like to upgrade, let us know. Uh, the indicators are included to get access to me and signal and many of you here are in that group and you get access to these classes as well so with that everybody thanks very much and we look forward to talking to you next week make sure to get your checklist and uh, let me see if i can find that more user-friendly uh, link although i did paste it in the chat before uh let's see i think it's moonstream uh dot uh trade there's a, there's a hyperlink to it that um, uh, is not working or I can't find it. So you can just use this one, mastery.cryptobrigade.com slash CM hyphen checklist. We'll, we'll have to get to the, the better one. Problem is it redirects when you click on it. So, but there's that link for you if you'd like to get it and didn't get it already. All right, everybody, thanks very much. And we'll see you next week. And uh, please feel free to share this uh, video uh, on the YouTubes. All right, take care, everybody.